Hi everyone, Tintin57 here with another Train Sim World 2 video. Firstly, I'd like to give a quick channel update if I may. This channel is really just a bit of a hobby for me and gives me a chance to interact with you guys via the comments and I'm blown away by the level of interaction recently and the subscriber count and I wanted to thank each and every one of you. I do want to grow the channel further though and my next target is 500 subscribers, so not that far to go. If I can get there, I'll do some of these updates on camera as I think that'll be a great thing to do. So if you can help me get to that target, I'd really appreciate it if you could spread the word about the channel. Now, on to what I wanted to say on Trainsim World 2 today. I think the big thing everyone was interested in was DTG stream on Tuesday night to talk about the state of the game. I think it was an interesting stream for various reasons and DTG held their hands up and talked about the console issues and the general crashes with Rush Hour as being wholly unacceptable. The main message that DTG gave was that it is their immediate priority to get everyone back playing the game the way they were before the Unreal Engine update as there's not been quite this level of discontent throughout TSW's history. For the specific issues with the PS5 missing DLC, there is a potential solution being developed where all your DLC will sit on the console but it will only mount or bring into memory the specific pieces of DLC that you want to play. Matt mentioned that although this would initially be a PS5 thing to get us all back playing, it has potential memory benefits across all platforms. Trophies 2 were my other particular concern, as you know, and it was explained that they are working with Sony to try and find out if the current trophy limits are purely an arbitrary number set by them and if that number can be extended by negotiation. I was trying to also find out if trophies were extended at some point in the near future. Would work be done on routes such as West Cornwall to retrofit a set of trophies as this is the first route without them. I haven't had an answer on this yet but I'll keep pushing as it's a question that may affect some players decision on purchasing future routes. The only thing on the stream that didn't really sit right with me was that there was no time frame as to when some of these issues are likely to be fixed. Just that it was the number one priority right now and that might be understandable because they need to take a look at it and they need to establish the level of fixing that needs to be done to be able to resolve these issues. The other standout point, or for me, I guess it was really a confirmation, is that testing is never officially carried out on consoles. They explained that there is currently no known way to test dev builds on console, but that they are speaking again to Sony and Microsoft about potential solutions to this. Now, my son plays Sea of Thieves on Xbox, and he's also part of the Insider program, where he gets to play betas before the public release. So could DTG create a similar scheme perhaps? I'd encourage all of you to watch the stream from Tuesday in full if you haven't done so already, as I've only given a very brief highlight above, and you can find the stream on DTG's own YouTube channel. Now let's talk about the West Cornwall route release, which was due yesterday, Thursday the 21st. The route was pulled from release at the very last minute after the QA team came back with a list of issues serious enough to warrant its withdrawal from sale. A couple of specific issues were mentioned such as the DSD and AWS alarms not sounding, but DTG did not go into too much detail as to what else influenced the decision. Some players on Xbox and some PlayStation players in Australia and New Zealand were able to get their hands on the route before it was withdrawn. No new release date has been given for the re-release and it's dependent on how fast Rivet developers can get through the list of issues. A lot of the community have raised issues around the poor sound of the Class 150 and Rivet talked about how they've taken that feedback on board but confirmed that no changes to the sound will be made in this initial batch of fixes before its re-release. 
So it's worth keeping that in mind if you do plan to buy the route once the new date is announced. I think after the state of the game discussion on Tuesday night, we've drawing the route from sale until it is in an acceptable and playable condition is absolutely the right thing to do. Let's just hope once it does get released, they've had a chance to take another thorough look at it based on feedback from the preview streams and feedback of those players that have already got their hands on it. And that's it for this update, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and please leave me a like and subscribe and help me get to that 500 subscribers. I really would appreciate that and I'll see you all on the next one.